You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Uh, yeah, we better start the show. Welcome to another episode of Combat Radio. Sorry. Um, the conversation <laughs> off mic, as always, is way too hilarious. It's like, do we even need to do a show? Does anyone even want to hear us talk? Because what we're talking about is so awesome. Anyway, uh... <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's go around the room. Um, we're going to start with the big robot, uh, Mecha Godzilla. Um, Hello, Ryan. world. How are you all? 35 countries out there, apparently. Yes, 36, if you want to count uh, Costa Rica, but who does, really? You're nobody <laughs> unless you have a military, right? <laughs> you just uh, switched off every listener we had. All I know. Latin Costa America just, <laughs> just logged off, off simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to Costa Rica. I want to you go should. I hear it's beautiful. Yeah. Also with us is one of our favorite regulars, uh, author of the brilliant book, The Making of Tron, and so many other things, filmmaker William Calley. Hey, everybody. Good and to see you again. Nice to see you, man. You're, it's always yeah. great to have you come Thank up. You. And then we got a bit of a royalty in the studio with us today. Yeah, it's... It's hard to beat this guy as a guest with some cachet, but one of our favorites, you may have uh, you may have seen the live feed when we interviewed him at PopCon, because he, he is a rather brilliant guy. Uh, you know him from things like Star Wars, Empire Strikes, the epic Cabin Boy. Let's start there. Cabin Boy, um, then let's, Star Wars. Let's start and end with Cabin Boy. <laughs> There's nothing we? after Cabin Boy. Forget I mean, Tron, forget the Black Hole, forget the Empire Strikes Back. Let's not forget Superman 4. Right, Quest for Peace. There you go, right, Quest for yep. Peace. Very good, well, yes, absolutely. It had a, it had a peaceful theme. It, Mr. Harrison Ellenshaw, good to have you here. Very nice to be here. Thank you. One of the cool things to start with, um, you've done the interview, but I'm going to have to backtrack for those who maybe have not heard our PopCon exchange. But in William Calley's book, there's a great picture of you as a young man being pushed on a cart by Walt Disney, who you knew uh, when they were building Disneyland. And, yes. And you were in the mix uh, when you know your father had a role. with Your father's got a window there. Do you have a window there yet? No. Fucking fascist. No. <laughs> Jeez. So are gonna, you kidding? I'm starting they, a campaign to get you a window. Well, they see me coming, and they charge me double just to get in. I doubt you know, that's because true, Because I'm a troublemaker. Brother. But, uh, yeah. My, my father has a window. In fact, he has one of the original windows that were uh, in there. And by window, if you see along Main Street, there are a number of windows that have names on them, similar to what people did in the late 1800s, 1900s, and so Walt Disney thought it would be very nice to have a window with some of the artists and uh. some of the, the filmmakers and designers yeah. at, at Disneyland. My father happens to have one. Uh, I think it's a art school, and there's Peter Ellen Shaw, my father, John Hench, and Herb Ryman, who were all Disney artists. Where is it, approximately? It's um, at the end of Main Street. You turn right, and it's right in that little alleyway where the first aid station is. Oh, nice. And it's up up above, and it's kind of cool because nobody really sees it, and then you can show people when you take them around. Well, I'm down there all the time, depending on what kind of bender I tie on uh, at the hotel before I go into the park. Do you? Uh, I can check in the first aid very early. That way you take the monorail so you don't have to drive over? Uh, No, I usually stumble in. It's more fun. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I I asked you the question last time, and I I, I think our audience would like to hear what your answer is. What do you think when you walk walk down Main Street now? You know, think? I think uh, I'm amazed how big the trees are I, and how small it looks. And that's that's part of what happens when you become an adult. Everything when you're when you're a kid. And keep in mind, Disneyland was under under construction when I was 10. And I would go down there with my father, uh, who worked at uh, Disney Studios. And you would, I, I mean, it was magical then. Even it was dirt and scaffolding. And the, the the day that I rode on this railroad cart was when Walt Disney was down there. It was on a Sunday, and my father was always very enthused about... He had this kind of fascination with life and with things that Walt Disney had. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty cool, because nothing wasn't interesting. It's kind of a double negative there, but... Here was Walt Disney walking around the park. Nobody was there. My father was there with my mother. Um, And Walt comes up to me and looks at me, and I'm 10 years old, and says, how would you like to be the first one to take uh, a ride on 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 Disneyland Railroad? And I'm going, yeah, great. Where's the train? And he takes me over to this flat car sitting on, uh, on some tracks, 
And he says, come on, climb on board. So I, I get on, on board and I'm facing front and I hear uh, Walt Disney pushing the, the cart. My dad grabs his uh, Roloflex camera from my from my mother. She was always put in charge of carrying the camera. You know, nice right. relationship. Uh, and he snaps a picture and Walt Disney is running along behind me and I'm looking straight ahead, a little bit frightened. And I hear this man huffing and puffing and I'm having this thought that... Did he stop oh, for a smoke? <laughs> oh my God. Everybody knew he smoked. And everybody knew at that time, even 1954, 55, that smoking was not a good thing in spite of what the ads were, you know, take a puff and it's springtime or your doctor recommends Pall Malls and, you know, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll get All sued, of that stuff. but whatever they were. Or, uh, and I'm thinking... You're going to kill him. <laughs> if, he has a, if he has a heart attack, this is not how I want to be remembered. Yeah, yeah, that's not the way you want to be rem remembered. Not, uh, you know, remember me as something else, but not that. You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. 